Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. Today I'm going to talk about Georgian pedestal cruet bottles. So um, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. There's your bottle, there's your pedestal on the bottom. Um, I have a few of these. Um, and, and like with some of the other things I've spoken about, there's no specific book on these. I have a few references. They're very sketchy. They're the kind of nicky nacky thing that um, nobody particularly collects or wants to write um, a, a book about them in particular. Um, uh, there's not even a book on Georgian cred cruets in general, you know. Um, I have quite a few different kinds um, that I'm going to show. And I've, in fact, you, the one I did on sweet meats and bonnet glasses is probably that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's very little reference, and you have to look some of it through through inference. I have one very special piece which I have very good references on that I will show you at the end um, and I will stick to my thing where I'll, I'll show you a few um, different references and, um, and maybe show you some references as we go along. So okay, thank you. So uh, the first reference I'm going to show you is a little booklet called Rummers and Goblets. It's a very nice little booklet if you're into looking at rummers um, by Stephen Parry. I think this is a self-published booklet. And yeah, most of the of the um, Georgian pedestal cruets I'm going to show you have lemon squeeze bases. So I'm just showing you um, because there is no specific reference saying these are these, these dates, etc. But here we go. Here's a couple of lemon squeeze, squeeze base uh, rummers of the same kind. Um, and in here He's dating them to 1800. So that gives you a good base date for the ones that I'm going to show you. Um, so I'll move on to something else. So I'm back with the, um, I've shown you this book before, the Phelps Warren Irish Glass Book. It's a very good book. Um, and one of the nice things about that, the Irish reference books is that they care about their glass more and they will show you the nicky nacky stuff that uh, traditional English collectors are not very interested in. So um, these are muffineers. I have no idea really what those are for, but this is the kind of thing. Um, these are dated, so these have got silver tops, so that's why these make such a nice reference for these kind of shapes. You've got Dublin 1797 and Dublin 1781. So yeah, dated silver, because hallmarks have absolute dates on them, are really good. And then over here, something um, they're not really dated. We've got one here, which is similar to one of the ones I have. Um, and they're dating these 1790 to 1830. Um, these are all machine cuts, so this must be the 1791. Um, yeah, mine are all probably pre-1800 um, because there's hardly any cutting. So um, you'll see that when I start to show you. So these are the first three I'm going to show you. Um, they have lemon squeeze bases. So you can see with the lemon squeezer shape in the bottom, um, there's quite a bit of rare, oh, I can say that right, wear around the bit that's actually touching the table, lots of little chips and bits and pieces off the square base. And then it's got these ribs that they've cut little thin notches into. Um, this one doesn't have a stopper. It's not usual for them to have the stopper. This one and uh, does have a stopper. It came with this stopper, but that is not the right stopper. I'll leave that out for now. This one, this is what the stopper should be like. Yeah, it came with this, and it looks really right for the period. So that's the kind of stoppers they should have. They may have had different ones as well. I know that's definitely not right. It looks way too late. Well, this one, sorry. Looks way too late. Clean, shiny. It's not right. But this one, this is the classic pointy kind that you'd have had then. And also, there were all three of them. Um, this one's got notches. This one doesn't. Um, this one has a slight twist in the in the ribs. Um, they have different tops. This one's just a straight top. This one has 
a pouring lip on it. This one has like a double pouring lip. Yeah. And these would have been used for oil and vinegar and that kind of thing on the table, at least as far as we know. Uh, and they're all um, with lemon squeeze bases. And you can see the, the quality of the glass. There's a bit of soot inside the glass. That's not dirt on the surface. That's inside the glass, that brown mark there. And you can see bubbles and little chips and stuff. So, yeah, this is, this is, and look here, big piece of um, soot embedded in the glass there. This is the kind of thing that you expect from pre-1800 glass. Um, as you turn it around, you've noticed that the collar here is not quite straight because when it was applied hot and it had problems controlling the glass in those days. So yeah, um, these are kind of like your classic examples of this kind of thing. So here we are with a couple more. Um, these are the time type with the, whether it be for pepper or other spices or Muff, whatever a muffling is used for. Um, the um, the top here, so this is, looks like it's made out of copper, which it will be, and it would have originally been uh, plated um, with silver, and it would have been, it's pre-electroplating, so it would have been the silver, uh, thin sheet of silver would have been heat pressed into the surface of this, rolled in, and then it would have been worked as um silver with um, copper with silver on melted into the surface of it because um, that's how they used to do what's called Sheffield plate this is a rib one it's got a pencil base it's got a big chip in it and it has actually got a crack in it as well but I bought a job lot of three of these um, this is the one that was in the roughest condition but they only cost me four quid so yeah but it's a nice example of what what the kind of thing that we were making. This one has got a silver top. I took it off earlier now, I can't get it to stay on because normally they just stay on in place, but I, I don't know what I did. Yeah, bucket it up. So this one I think is actually solid silver, um, but it's early silver, it's very light. Um, it's in rough shape and um, it's not hole marked. So yeah, and I can't get it to stay on now. Although it was on there nice and firmly before I started messing it with it before this film. Um, and you can see here, this doesn't have a lemon squeeze base. It has a broken pontal um, and lots of wear around the base. Big bubble in it. You can see a bit of soot there. So you can see, yeah, this is nice early glass. Um, it has some little, it's got ribs and it's got little... cut lines in it in the surface two rows like a barrel so so yeah those are and they both to me they look sort of 1800 or pre-1800 I wouldn't have put them post especially this one here um, yeah so uh, this one's a bit different from the others the, if you look on it it's, it looks like one of the ones I was just showing you apart from the cutting so it has these um little scale cuts in the bottom and at the top and then it has this husk pattern in a frieze around it um, lemon squeeze base uh, obligatory chip in the base and where where it hits the table and the copper top that was once um, silver this one stays on nicely so um, this one, I, I believe, is an Irish one. People might make me say Anglo-Irish, but I think it's Irish. Um, the cutting is very Irish. The other thing is that I bought it off eBay from Belfast. Um, yeah, and uh, it was two ninety nine, two ninety nine, and they were selling it as a nineteen fifties pepper pot. Um, so yeah, and that's because there's no, there's very little reference for this kind of stuff. Um, once things kind of pass out of memory and become quite rare, um, people don't know what what they are. Uh, they can see, yeah, it's kind of interesting and nice. They, I think they said it was kitsch 1950s. Yeah, um, 
And it's definitely not that. It's more like your 1790s. So yeah, that was a, a real steal from eBay. Um, and it's really lovely. I've just come back to the Irish Glass book to um, show you something from that um, cruet bottle that I just showed you. If you look here, you can see the, uh, the husk cutting that I was telling you about. If I go down another one, you can see, look, there's some more here. Swags on this one. And if I was to go through the book, I could probably find you um, more examples. And if I was to go through my other Irish books, I'd, I'd find even more. And um, yeah, I never see it in relation to any of my English glass, so I'm presuming it's a very Irish feature. So here's the last one I'm going to show you. Um, I am going to tell you what, in the presence of greatness, um, this stopper has got nothing to do with it. I put it on because it's about the same colour and um, yeah, it keeps the dust from falling out inside. Because I'm never going to wash this because I'm scared of what might happen to the gilding. Um, this is a, a James Giles Cruet. Um, 1760, 1770, something like that. Um, he was the gilder for Royal Worcester, um, best gilder in the UK, apparently. Um, the, the blank for this um, probably been made by Whitefriars, which was then in the in the Strand. Um, and if you look at the gilding, if I hold it close, look how superb that is with the scruffito work on the surface where they've scratched additional detail into it each one of his pieces or sets i would say because this was probably from a set is unique what he does is he does use the same motif over and over again so you'd see this little sprig here somewhere else um, but not in combination with these um, yeah, this is a fantastic piece. The same, you'd see others with similar tops to this, but you wouldn't see it in this combination. Um, but the detail work on this is is great. Um, this is what you're looking for. Someone has previously painted on the bottom of it, and it's come off, so it has been in someone's collection at some point. Um, I got this off eBay at, for a steal. Um, and that um, yeah it didn't cost me nothing but it didn't cost me what it should have done and uh, yeah it's a really lovely piece um, James Dials died in poverty in the end because only the nobility were buying his stuff and um, and they didn't bother to pay him so yeah that's what happens for if you were too good a tradesman in the um, Georgian period so yeah this is a fantastic piece and um, I will show you a reference for it so the book I'm showing you here is uh, the decanter and illustrated history of glass from 1650 by Andy McConnell and he's obviously a fan because he has two whole pages on um, James Giles decanters but a few of them are pedestal style ones sorry not the thing there and um yeah so what you can see here is like this one here it, it's got all these little flowers which are like the ones that you could see um i think i'll move the camera down as opposed to um try and pick the book up which are like the ones that were cut in the top. This one here has a sprig of flowers or a bouquet or garland of flowers, I don't know what you want to call this, that is like the one that I have. This one here has a foot that's very similar to the one that I have. So you can see what I mean about all of these are unique designs, but um, in fact, actually this one here looks like it's got a garland of flowers, very like the one on my bottle so you can see he he repeats var various motifs like there's there's two here with um, like peacocks or some sort of exotic bird 
Yeah, that's a very common motif on his. There's another one there with an exotic bird. And he repeats those kind of patterns and little features, little sprigs of flowers like this one has got just in the bottom there, like mine has. The little flowers running around the top of this one, like mine has. So, yeah, you see all these features and you can sort of like look at, you have to look at a few patterns and everything that he's done and then you can go, is the starling looking the same? Are the patterns just repeats of different combinations of ones you're seeing and other things? So, yeah, if you see a piece of his work, um, you really need to be looking at a lot of his pieces of work to pick it out because what you, there'll be no sort of like direct reference for it um, unless it's already been in a book somewhere, in which case you're paying an absolute fortune and, and good luck to you. So, yeah, so that's um, that's the James Giles piece. So that's the end of my video on um, Georgian pedestal cruet bottles. Um, yeah, go out there, find out these, um, find these little pieces of unrecognised glass before they're all smashed up because, you know, some of them have got big chunks missing out of them and cracks and stuff. And, um, you know, they're such an odd shape that they are going to get damaged and people are just going to chuck them away. And that's probably why they're so rare, I, I suspect. It may have been common at one time, um, but they're not very common now. And um, yeah, just keep your eyes open. So yeah, and they're not very well referenced. You have to sort of like look at other things. Only the James Giles one and the Irish one, which is no direct reference, so I'm just looking at the cutting. Um, are there any good references for? So yeah, keep an eye out for them. They're nice things. So. Um, Oh, I should say, if you want to see more content like this, please um, like and subscribe to this video. Thank you.